differentiability and continuity, they do not necessarily imply each other. So differentiability does imply continuity, but continuity does not imply differentiability. And it's the issue of this smoothness that is the problem. Okay, because differentiability, it needs to have smooth and continuous. Okay, so if it's, if it's not smooth, although it may be continuous, it's not differentiable. So here are some examples of some non-differentiable functions. So here is just not continuous. So the, although it's smooth, not continuous means it is not differentiable. Here we have a kink in the graph. Okay? At that one point, it is non-differentiable because we cannot define the, the slope at that point. And this one's a little bit special because this one's although smooth and continuous, it has a vertical tangent line. Okay? So that one does not is not the derivative is not defined at that point so we cannot say that it's differentiable at that point so looking at these graphs and why are these or differentiable or not differentiable so this line here is although and it is smooth okay if we think of this straight line it's smooth it comes to a corner so at that point it is not smooth therefore not differentiable. It is continuous though. So for B, this is discontinuous, okay, right at the asymptotes, discontinuous, so not differentiable. Okay, this is differentiable for the domain that it exists, okay, for this domain, but the endpoint is not differentiable, okay, so that's not differentiable at that endpoint, but it is differentiable along this domain, but for the entire domain, it's not differentiable, okay, so the endpoint is not differentiable. And then for this one here, it, it has, it's smooth, smooth, however, at that, at the point where the piecewise function is defined, at x0, it is discontinuous, so it's not differentiable. Okay. So let's go ahead and differentiate these functions using the rules that we've have so far. So we have the product rule, we have the, the quotient rule, we have our power rule, we also have this uh, horizontal compression adjustment that we can do. So this is a product rule, so we have to apply the product rule. So we differentiate the first part, okay, and maybe I'll do this in, I'll color code this. So we're gonna differentiate ln x, and then we leave the, the cos 2x by itself plus we differentiate we leave the log x and then we differentiate the cos x it becomes negative sine 2x and because of that horizontal compression we really should times it by 2 okay that horizontal compression we need to times by two. So there's our derivative. We are going to kind of simplify this a little bit. So if there's any common factors we factor out. In this case, there are no common factors. It doesn't look like there's any identities here. So I'll group these terms in this way. This one here, we were looking for a second derivative. So we need to differentiate once. Okay, so the first derivative is going to, going to be the first derivative will be cos x 2x and then multiply by that horizontal compression but times 2 and then we need to differentiate this again so as we differentiate this again we're going to end up with 
negative 2 sine 2x okay and then again we want to because that horizontal compression we're going to multiply that by 2 so the second derivative looks like this negative 4 sine 2x This one here has quite a bit involved now. This one's a little bit more involved. It's got the quotient rule and the product rule. So I'm going to color code this. There's my product term. And I'm going to do the quotient term in blue. Okay, I look for a simplification first. It doesn't look to be a simplification. So what I need to apply then is my product rule I'm gonna and you can do this two different ways you can do the quotient rule in the product rule or you can do the product rule in the quotient rule so I'm gonna apply the the product rule inside the quotient rule okay so I'm gonna differentiate the first term times it by 2 I'm gonna leave the cos x on its own okay so that represents the the first part of the product plus e to the 2x so leave the first term undifferentiated I differentiate the second term now it's just a horizontal shift which does not affect the derivative okay so there is the numerator I'm just gonna there's the numerator part differentiated. I need to now apply the quotient rule, so multiply that by x minus, and then we leave the numerator undifferentiated, e to the 2x, cosine of x plus pi. Okay, so that's the numerator undifferentiated, and then I differentiate. The denominator which is just times by one okay so that there is a numerator of the quotient rule and then I just apply the power to the denominator and there is my derivative so I probably should try to simplify this a little bit if I can uh, it looks like here I can factor out some terms uh, it looks like there's a common e to the 2x. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to work too hard to simplify this, but here there's e to the 2x. Uh, it's going to be 2, 2x cos x plus pi plus, or sorry, minus sine of x plus pi minus uh, oh, sorry, that's going to be x sine x, and then that's going to be minus cosine of x plus pi. There's lots of terms here, so I just really have to be careful with my like terms and my signs. And there's my derivative simplified. So in the, the color part is the derivative. I've just tried to simplify the expression here in black.